Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. We're in the corporate America. We're, we're all about, uh, I, I give you this product and you give me money. Always be closing. That tangible selling process. And for those that have no clue what I'm talking about, here's the quick 30 seconds on it. In August of 2018, I lost my job in the corporate world due to large scale organizational changes that basically resulted in the complete annihilation of my position of 17 years, which was the catalyst for my experiment into making a living with landscape photography. Now, fast forward to today, it's been uh, well over, a, or, yeah, it's been over a year and a half now since I released one of these uh, business of photography or, or financial review or year in review kind of recap videos. I used to make these at the, the beginning of each year, recapping the prior year, discussing my specific financial results, but I wanted to wait until August of this year as this marks my four year anniversary since this entire experiment first began. And over the course of those four years, I generated a total of $348,753, which shocked me honestly, as the first 12 month cycle, I only brought in a total of around $15,000. And in this video, I wanna review my specific financial results over the duration of this experiment, the revenue channels that didn't work out for me, what did work out for me, and what my plans are moving forward. So to jump right into it, diversification, it was always something that was um, I was focused on from day one. I researched every potential revenue stream that would in some way relate to landscape and outdoor photography. And the result of that effort was a total of about 15 different revenue possibilities. And the difficult part about making a living with landscape photography is that the path isn't really clear as say a wedding photographer, for example, where you would want to target you know, couples that are about to get married, or let's say a real estate photographer where you'd want to reach out to those that are looking to sell a home. But when you're a landscape photographer, who do you reach out to? You, you can't target individuals that own mountains or, or waterfalls to see if they want said mountain photograph. It just doesn't work that way. But in 2020, I received an email that completely changed my entire outlook on how I was going about this. And the one line in this email that changed everything for me was, the market for landscape photography things is small, but the market for the landscape photography experience is massive. And that one line is something that I think about every single day. So as far as is the revenue channels that didn't work out for me versus what did work out for me, and I do wanna preface this video by saying, my experience is not the right way to start a photography business. It's also not the wrong way to start one either. It's just a way that worked out for me. So to jump right into it, this is the 2021 revenue spread, which I'm really, really proud of because it's very diversified now. A couple years ago, I showed one of these pie charts and I think over 60% or maybe 70% of that pie chart was solely dedicated to YouTube ad revenue, which basically means I had all of my eggs in one basket. It wasn't something that I purposely did, of course. It was just something that just, it was just the way that it, it worked out for me. And now I'm really proud to say that this is the last year's 2021 revenue spread and 29% is accounted for YouTube. I won't run through all of this. I'm gonna go through specific uh, individual metrics down to the dollar of each revenue channel in just a minute. But I really just wanna show this spread and there's two things I really wanna point out here. The first is that YouTube is only, is only accounting for 29% of uh, the overall revenue, which is very good. But this right here, 17% is workshops. And in years past, that was zero. And it is slowly growing. Last year was 17%. This year in 2022, that should be 25% or a quarter of my business. In 2023, it should be closer to 30%. Workshops, it's not a quick fix. It takes a long time to get workshops up and running. Usually it takes about a year's runway to, to launch a workshop. So it's definitely not a, a quick fix. It takes a little bit of time, but it is by far what I am most passionate about. I absolutely love you making YouTube videos, but workshops is what I am really, really passionate about. There is just something that cannot be beat. Being able to spend you know 24 hours a day maybe maybe seven days a week or depending on how long the workshop is just completely immersed in a location all just non-stop photography it's absolutely amazing and, I, and that's really really what i'm passionate about so i'm really happy with the way this spread is starting to turn out now as far as the the dollars go so year over year growth by revenue stream as you can see the, the in 2018 and this is only from august to december so this is a very short window here but 2019 sixteen thousand dollars then up to 34 and a half 2021 jumped up to forty one thousand dollars in youtube ad revenue and then in 2022 this is just through 
through August. This is about $23,000. Seems like it's a pretty um, big dip here, but um, YouTube ad revenue, it's all over the place. You really can't base a business off of it. It's not something that is very consistent, but in my experience, that re ad revenue kind of peaks in the uh, third and fourth quarter of the year. So I would say 2022 will probably be a little bit lower than 2021, but it should come in somewhat close to that number, which is fine. Now, the next largest revenue channel for me is sponsorships. And as you can see, this has been showing pretty good growth from 2019 all the way up through 2022. And this is only through August. And sponsorships could be anything from me creating um, photographs for a brand that they can use in some type of marketing campaign, or me creating some type of video content that a company can use, or maybe it's a sponsored video on YouTube. It's kind of a, a large catch-all bucket, all related to some type of sponsorship for a brand. And it's something that um, I haven't been heavily focused on, but it is an important revenue channel, obviously, as you can see here. But I would suspect that based off of what I know is in the hopper for the rest of this year, 2022 will definitely beat out 2021. I don't know if it will get up to $50,000, but it will definitely be a few thousand dollars higher than the previous year. Now, the third largest is uh, affiliate marketing. You might be saying that, you know, there was a, a huge dip in 2021 through 2022. And you're right, there, there was. Uh, 2021 was almost $30,000. And 2022 is right now at $4,500. I do know of a couple things that are coming through by the end of the year that will get me pretty close to that same number in 2021. It might be a little bit lower, but affiliate marketing is not something that I have been focused on heavily. This one of the challenges that I've had is that I'm a one man show. I don't have anybody supporting me or anybody helping me. So when I want to grow an aspect of my business, say workshops, or um, you know tutorial series, it takes pretty much all of my bandwidth to, to really focus on those two channels and continue on with YouTube and everything else. So it's I feel like I'm spreading myself thin sometimes. I kind of have to pick and choose what channels I really want to go after. But affiliate marketing is not something that I've been heavily focused on this year. But once 2022 is over, it should come somewhere in line with 2021, but there really won't be any growth there. Now workshops. In 2020, you can see $8,000. 2021, $24,000. Through August of this year, we are at $21,000, which is absolutely fantastic. I'm super, super excited to see that happen. Based off of the workshops that I have planned for the remainder of the year, this number should get towards about $30,000, which is a big jump over 2021. And the workshops that I have planned for 2023, I'm expecting that revenue to jump upwards towards thirty-five dollars or maybe $40,000. So to see that channel continue to grow and it be something that I have so much fun doing that I love doing and I really enjoy and I'm very passionate about is absolutely tremendous. It's the thing that I am by far the most excited about. 2023 is going to be absolutely amazing. I've got sold out workshops going to the Lofoten Islands, to uh, to Greenland, to um, I think I have a couple spots left in the Dolomites workshop. I haven't, I, I probably, should, I don't know, what the heck, I haven't even, even announced this yet, but I have two workshops. One that is going to be going to Namibia in July of next year, and one that's going to Patagonia as well. When that's released, I'll, I'll of course send out information regarding that as well. But Really, really excited to see where 2023 goes from a workshop perspective. Now, the other revenue channels, partnership content. This is when I was gonna when I was creating uh, video content for like Visual Wilderness or Outdoor Photography Guide. As you can see, I, I no longer did it in 2021 or 2022. I just uh, pretty much just just ran out of time. I only have so much time to to kind of spread myself across all of these different things. So it wasn't something I could really focus on any longer. And then one-to-one -one virtual sessions, you can see it's kind of, it started to show a little bit of growth, but then in 2022, actually through August of this year, I guess it's not too bad, but it's one of those things that I, I really don't market it very much, but I really uh, enjoy doing it. I still offer them, they're on my website if you would like to book one, but that has showed very little growth. And in other projects, this was just kind of like random things I used to do back in the day when I was trying to get things going, like uh, real estate photography. I, I dabbled in that a little bit because I had to find a way to kind of to pay some bills, but no longer do that anymore. Speaking engagements, these are uh, just kind of random engagements through, um, they could be something as small as maybe a, a local photo club or uh, the, uh, the, I was a, a, um, one of the keynote speakers at the Carolina Nature Photography Association, the CNPA, earlier this year. So, and I really enjoy doing that. Public speaking has definitely been a big fear of mine, but I'm a firm believer that the more uncomfortable you make yourself, the faster you are going to grow at something. I think being comfortable 
It might feel good temporarily, but it's kind of like the kiss of death. It's very hard to grow when you kind of stay in your little bubble of comfort. So I'm starting to really enjoy the speaking engagements. And then uh, some of the smaller channels, print sales. And I really want to touch on this. As you can see, little, little bit of growth in 2020. I mean, it kind of imploded in 2021, and that's because I took my... Uh, my print page off of my website, or I closed it down, and it's been closed ever since then. You can see there's no revenue in 2022, mainly because I just didn't have a whole lot of time to dedicate it to it. I think the way that I was going about it was incorrect. I was kind of marketing my prints to other photographers, and granted, photographers do buy other photographers' work, but I think the larger audience are non-photographers and I was spending a lot of time. I did everything myself. I printed everything on my printer here. I cut it. I, uh, I uh, cut the prints. I packaged the prints. I shipped the prints. And it just took a lot of work just to send one singular print out for you know $100 or $150. And it took a ton of time. And I just haven't had time to really dedicate to that. I got two kids in college. And I just had to focus on where the revenue was. And I did not have time to try and really grind at something to kind of grow it when I was kind of had a lot of headwinds coming at me. I had to really go where the wind was behind my back and that was all the, the revenue channels that I have been focused on. And then uh, last but not least here, and then I wanna get into the things that didn't work out for me, but virtual product sales is something that, uh, as you can see, this is a new thing. 2021, 346, 2022, 411. So I'm hoping that that's gonna be a big jump here in the coming months in 2022. And, Virtual product sales is basically um, full tutorials. In a, in a YouTube video, I can only cram so much information into 15 or 20 minutes, and I really, really work hard to try and keep things as concise and fluid as possible without me kind of rushing through it, but there's only so much you can cram into a, a 15 minute time span. And these virtual products are full blown tutorials from one hour to two hours long that really go into a specific topic and I'm about to release um, my most highly requested uh, tutorial ever this October, which I'm really, really excited about. So be sure to, to stay tuned for that. But that's the, the, the revenue channel kind of year over year growth. And I'll show the, the actual dollars here in, in just a minute. But some of the things that didn't work out for me, I mentioned all those revenue channels that I went after in the very beginning, 15 different channels, things like tourism boards and media companies. I reached out to them constantly all over the world to see if they needed any content to promote their tourism industry in their respective country or city. Um, never got one call back. I reached out to media companies that had clients that were in the outdoor and kind of landscape uh, uh, field to see if they needed any content, content for their clients. I did get some calls back, but nothing ever came to fruition. Stock photography was a complete bust for me. I wasted a lot of time with that, never generated one single penny. In social media, I used to think of Facebook and Instagram as a way to, to generate income, and that was a complete flop. That didn't work out at all. And I, and I don't think of YouTube as social media, per se. I really think of social media, things like Twitter, Instagram, um, Facebook, things like that. And then I mentioned print sales. Print sales is something that I, I dedicated a fair amount of time in the very, very beginning, but I have really uh, kind of had to stop focusing on that. It's not to say that print sales is not a viable revenue channel because it absolutely is, but any full-time landscape photographer knows this, that it's extremely, extremely difficult to have print sales be your number one revenue driver. It's very, very tough. So, and I will revisit that in the future, but here is the, uh, let me go up here. This is the, the actual breakdown per year over year broken down by the individual revenue channels. If you wanna pause the video and take a look at this, you can. You can see that the first few months in 2018, only $1,500. Then 2019, this is a full 12 month period here, $31,000. Then it ramped up to $79,000, which is a huge jump. And then 2021 was $142,000, which is another huge jump. And then through August of this year, at about $95,000, and based off of my projections and what I know is gonna come in, I should end up this year around 165 or maybe $175,000, which is another big jump over last year as well, which has absolutely blown me away that I could make that kind of money uh, doing something that I love to do. To get back to the email that I was sent, the, the, the market for landscape photography things is small but the market for the landscape photography experience is massive. That is the line that has stuck with me forever. And it really made me realize that creating value for other people is the way to go. 
The more value that I can create for someone else who's interested in outdoor landscape photography, the more they're gonna be able to go out and create that experience for themselves. And I firmly believe that that is the market, at least from my pathway, that is what I am focused on. If I just focus on creating value, the money's gonna come in. And when I first started this, this, this experiment, I came from the corporate world. We're in the corporate America. We're, we're all about, uh, I, I give you this product and you give me money, that tangible selling process. And when I first started this, that's what I was focused on. I was like, well, I gotta sell stuff to make money. I was so focused on what can I sell? That email changed it all for me and I started to focus on how can I provide value so others can go out and have this experience for themselves. And focusing on that value, everything else just fell into place. It's like the saying, you, t you give a person a fish, they eat for a night. You teach a person to fish, they will eat the rest of their life. It's the same kind of thing. So I've been focused on creating value. As you can see here, I sent out a, a monthly newsletter. I've done this for quite a few years now. It, in August of 2021, I was at about maybe 16,000 subscribers on my email subscriber list. Now in July of 22, that number is right at about 26,000. So once again, very good growth there. And that number has been steadily growing ever since I launched my, uh, my monthly newsletter which um, if uh, you're not subscribed, I'll put a, a link above here that you can. I send out a, a free 30 minute uh, Lightroom video tutorial as a way to say thank you. It's something that it's an easy way for me to distribute free value to you all, whether it's through a blog article or recent videos or, or whatever it happens to be. And I really enjoy doing that as well. And then my website, you can see that in 2018, I'm not even sure how low this number is, but I think it was right around maybe 2000 visitors to my website or 3000 visitors. 2019, 40,000, 2020, 80,000 visitors. 2021, we took a little bit of a dip. I think it's around like maybe 76,000 uh, visitors, unique visitors. And then in 2022, as of right now, we are right at about 55 or maybe 50-ish thousand. But by the time the end of the year comes, that should be right around that 2020 benchmark as well, which is really, really exciting to see because I put a ton of work in my website because once again, that's my, my central hub for my brand. And that's how I am able to distribute value to other people through my website. So it's something that I am always, always focused on from day one. And anyone who's looking to do this, I would highly, highly recommend that you get started on a website as early as possible. It does not have to be perfect. If it's 80% perfect, go ahead and launch it. You'll make tweaks and refinements to it all the time. I make changes to my website every single week and it is extremely, extremely important to myself. And it's a perfect segue actually to the, the sponsor of this week's video, which is Squarespace, who I use for, for everything I, for related to my website. I have probably gone through maybe five, no, four complete overhauls of my website. I am not a website CEO master. I'm not a website developer or anything like that. And Squarespace makes it super, super easy to do this. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. So it's something that uh, I have really, really enjoyed using. Squarespace provides a dynamic and attractive online platform to create your website. You can display your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and customize the layout and look and feel of your gallery just so you can make it your own. With Squarespace's traffic overview feature, you can track trends in page visits and views to better optimize your content. And you can even grow and engage with your customers with Squarespace's email campaign tools, which will enable you to create engaging emails that match your website with your products or blog posts and logo, just so your messaging remains consistent. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So creating value for other people is something that has been the real turning point for me. And like I said earlier, my way is not the right way to start a photography business. It's not the wrong way. It is just a way that has worked out for me. And I couldn't be more thankful for the way things have progressed so far. It has been a ton of work. I have made a ton of mistakes. I have also learned a lot as well. And I started to make these videos in hopes that if somebody else is possibly out there looking to start, a photography business or maybe a landscape photography centric business. I hope some of the information that I share in this video and this entire um, kind of revenue or business of photography series is something that helps other people, maybe helps save them a little bit of time as they go through kind of setting up their business as well. If you have any questions about 
anything that I covered here, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as possible. And if you enjoyed the video, if you could give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. I'll put a, a link to the playlist of all of these revenue videos. I think this is, there's not a ton of them. I think this might be the sixth or the seventh one over the last four years. And I'll put a link here that you can check out that playlist as well. Um, as always, I really do appreciate you carving out a little bit of time to spend it with me today. And I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.